lot has been said about the Chequers Agreement, the white paper and what it actually means for Brexit. I want to take a few minutes to explain what the government has agreed and what this means for us leaving the EU. The best path to delivering Brexit, as well as the best outcome for the country, is to leave the EU with a good deal. The EU has put two options on the table. Option one is a standard free trade agreement, a bit like the one the EU has recently signed with Canada, between the EU and England, Scotland and Wales. But Northern Ireland would be excluded since this approach would not provide for a frictionless border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. It would stay in the EU customs union and parts of the single market. That would mean breaking up the UK economically and creating new barriers to our own internal market. Option two is a relationship built on the one Norway has with the EU. Membership of the single market, which would mean we still had free movement of people, still paid vast annual membership bills and had to align with EU rules across the whole of our economy. It would also involve membership of the customs union, which would mean we couldn't strike our own trade deals. This approach would not deliver on the referendum result. Neither of these options is acceptable to the UK. So in order to move the negotiations forward, we needed to put a credible third option on the table. To work for the UK, it needs to not break up the UK, deliver on the referendum result, and be good for our economy. And for the EU to consider it, it needs to be a proposal that they can see works for them as well. The white paper the government published following the agreement reached at Chequers is that proposal. The white paper proposals would deliver the Brexit people voted for while protecting jobs and our precious union. They would mean an end to free movement and taking back control of our borders. No more vast annual contributions to the EU budget. The UK out of the common agricultural policy. The UK out of the common fisheries policy. At the moment, some EU legislation becomes law in this country without our parliament ever having considered it. Our deal would end this. Maintaining the shared security capabilities that keep our citizens safe. The ability to sign comprehensive trade deals with other countries. Frictionless trade in goods to protect jobs in industries which depend on just-in-time supply chains, meaning no hard border between Ireland and Northern Ireland or between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Our previous proposal said that we could achieve frictionless trade by maintaining substantially similar regulatory standards. But allowing goods from another country to cross your border without any checks requires a very high degree of trust. So we needed to make a stronger commitment to get that good deal for Britain. That is why we have put the new offer of a common rulebook in goods and agricultural products on the table. Some people are concerned about us maintaining common standards with the EU, even in this limited area. I understand that concern, but I think it is in the national interest in a way that it wouldn't be for, say, financial services. Let me explain. First, the rules that cover goods have been relatively stable over the last 30 years. Second, many of the relevant standards are set by international bodies, which we will remain a member of after we leave the EU. Third, the many UK businesses that trade with the EU will have to continue meeting these rules anyway, whether or not the government makes a promise to. Making a formal commitment allows us to establish a free trade area that will be good for our whole economy. It will deliver friction-free trade in goods with our nearest trading partners in the EU. Businesses will be able to import and export goods across the EU frontier without checks. The just-in-time supply chains that underpin high-skilled manufacturing jobs across the country will be able to continue without disruption. Early in this process, both sides agreed a clear desire to find solutions to the unique circumstances in Northern Ireland through a close future relationship. We have now developed our proposals and put an approach on the table which does precisely that. The white paper represents a significant shift in our position. It is now for the EU to respond, not simply to fall back onto previous positions which have already been proven unworkable, but to evolve their position as we have. Key elements of our proposals are non-negotiable. 
For example, ending free movement, leaving the customs union, ending the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, and ending vast annual contributions to the EU budget. And on that basis, I look forward to agreeing a good deal for the UK. The government believes this is the right deal for Britain, but nothing stands still. It would include a clause that would allow the UK and the EU to review the arrangements in light of changing trade flows, the evolution of the rulebook and new technologies. There is no alternative to the white paper that both honours the result of the referendum and is negotiable. I firmly believe that we can complete what we have started. We can negotiate a new relationship with the EU that works in our mutual interest. One that honours the referendum result, gives us control of our money, our borders and our laws. As I've said in the past, the process of withdrawal is complex and it will require hard work, serious work and detailed work. The government has done that work. The white paper is our plan for the future. It is the way to the stronger and brighter tomorrow that I know awaits the whole United Kingdom. Now we must have the courage and the determination to seize it.